Hey guys, it's Hussein Kabani. Again, you should know who I am because you're on my feed. Um, yes, I have clean shaven now. Uh, I think I'm done with the beard. That face is gone again. So this is me now. Okay, um, so today what I want to do is just have this very quick chat with you guys. Um, first off, I am drinking some new type of tea here. I'll tell you what it is. So it's hot chocolate. So it is from David's Tea, it's hot chocolate. I just uh, was running late again a few minutes, so I just poured it. So I'm going to wait a minute here before I start sipping on it. So um, what I'm gonna do here quickly today is, is that just a very, very, very quick market update. And then let's talk about uh, some things that influence your home value when you put it up for sale. So uh, I really just looked at Durham. It was, uh, it's a little bit manual process right now because the reports aren't out. So I exported all of the data from uh, for Durham from uh, June 1st to June 15th for 2019 and 2020, just to kind of get a half month idea year over year of where we are at and how things are looking. Overall, the market is actually up. So even in number of transactions, so excuse me while I just kind of read this stats out, I just pulled them. So the sales, number of sales are actually up by 7.4% across Durham. Average price is up by 5.1%. And the days on market have been reduced by about 32%. So that's something like going from being 23 days on the market to 15 days on the market. Um, there, there have actually been a lot of double digit growths in average uh, selling price throughout Durham. Um, I can give you guys a chart of what I have pulled. If you guys want to take a look at it, just send me a, a DM or, you know, just send me an email or a text with your email address and I can forward it off to you. It's kind of rough, but if you want to take a look at it, I'll be happy to share that with you. Um, but one of the notable ones I saw was Whitby. So Whitby actually had a very, very, very strong, um, price, uh, appreciation in detached homes. So their detached homes in the first half of June versus last year was up by 16.3%. So really, really massive growth over there. Um, just getting along to what we are going to be doing here today for the next few minutes. I'm going to pour my tea here now. Looks like it's kind of ready. It's like really, really hot. I'm not even going to try to take a sip of that just yet. Um, really what I want to talk about is like increasing, uh, your home value before you put it up for sale. So, uh, there have been, uh, people that have approached me and said, Hey, like, you know, let's put up the house for sale. Uh, should we finish our basement? So my answer always is to finishing the basement. For the most part, I would say is no, unless uh, there is a different circumstance. But um, really why I would say no to finishing your basement is because I think the cost and the effort that would take you would outweigh what you're usually going to be able to get for a basement. So if we're just talking about a normal basement and whatnot, it probably cost you some, with a, like, just say with the full washroom, probably cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 35 to maybe $45,000 to finish. Uh, in a nice way. Uh, and I really don't think personally that you're going to be able to get that all of that money back. I like the idea of finished basements. And I do think that on the resale market, they do bring you a little bit more value. But the thing is, is that I don't think that they bring you the value that you actually invest into it. So, um, you know, if you're going to spend the $35,000, $45,000 in value, I don't think that it's going to bring you a sixty or $70,000 uh, return on your investment. I think what you're going to spend is roughly what you're probably going to get back. So I do like the idea of finished basements. Uh, you know, if you're going to live in the house, enjoy it. Uh, and then when you're selling it, you're going to recoup your money. It's not going to be a loss of money. And your house could potentially stand out to people because you have the finished basement. So, um, and they would be willing to pay more at that time. But in terms of like turning it into like, uh, something to do to increase the value of your property uh, for an immediate sale, uh, usually is not a good idea. I say usually because there is a different way of looking at it. So if you have a separate entrance or if you have like a walkout or some way that you can configure this to being like a, an income potential that might help you. And I'm not saying it will help you out in all locations. Um, but in some locations, it actually might make sense for you to actually finish it and get an increased value on it uh, because the basement is finished as a basement apartment. So finishing basements, that's kind of my uh, thing around it when people ask me that question. Um, the other thing I can tell you guys is, is that, uh, hey Hattie, uh, one of the topics is going to come up is about your lighting. So that is going to definitely help increase value. So but we're going to get to that one in a minute. So stay tuned there, Hattie. And Hattie's uh, going to be giving away some light fixtures to uh, people that are watching and some of my clients. So I'll be reaching out to some of you and making some posts. So he's offered up six uh, awesome looking uh, light fixtures. So uh, they're lamps, very nice lamps. So we'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, but yeah, going back to what we were talking about, so kitchens. So kitchens, uh, what I would really say is, is that people are really looking for stainless steel appliances. I mean, like, look, uh, I know their uh, white appliances and black appliances could look nice uh, depending on, you know, the age of the home and what the pattern is or like what the colors and the, the finishes of the, of the kitchen. But a lot of times people still want to see stainless steel. Um, and when you start to get into higher end homes, I would say a lot of people want to start to see even more built in appliances. Um, so I think appliances in your kitchen is going to be very important. Um, also, uh, countertops. Now, look, uh, I think this depends too on the area, uh, like the type of home that you're trying to sell. Okay, so if you're trying to sell like a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar or four hundred fifty thousand dollar home where they're just kind of flipping very quickly, like hotcakes, maybe you don't need to go through that extreme. Uh, I was visiting with the with a potential client uh, yesterday, and we were talking about their kitchen, and their house should probably trade somewhere in the eight eight and a quarter range, and to help them boost it up. Up there to make it attractive to other people I think the countertop will probably cost them about three thousand dollars to change they have the normal um, laminate countertop right now that the builder would have installed but for them to change it would be about three thousand dollars and I think that's a good investment a really good investment because someone's gonna come in they're gonna knock on the counter and they're gonna say okay well I like this um, so I would say in the kitchen stainless steel appliances uh, countertops uh, possibly backsplash those are the major things I would want to kind of hit over there in the kitchen um, Moving along to flooring. So flooring, um, I know there's people out there that do like carpet. Uh, it does feel very cozy on your feet. Um, for the most part, I would say that a lot of people are looking for hardwood flooring now uh, throughout the house even. Maybe the bedrooms you can kind of get away with. Um, but uh, yeah, like personally in my house, I have like hardwood or engineer throughout the whole house. I, I like the look of it. And I think a lot of people are looking for this. Also, I think it's a it's a pretty cost effective way to kind of uh, give it a new and fresh kind of feeling as well. Um, so along with that, I would say is, is like uh, it's probably going to be one of the I don't want to say cheaper things to do, but the price of flooring has come down quite a bit. I have a couple of good contacts for flooring. So if you guys are looking at doing flooring, you can send me a message and I can you know pass you along to uh, some people that I know that could help you out with it. Um, but yeah, so uh, for the cost of doing flooring, replacing the carpet and the time that it actually takes, I think it would be well worth it. Another thing I could recommend is, is that depending on how your paint looks in your house, I think painting could help you out and go a long way. Again, it's going to add to that refreshing look. So um, again, have contacts for painting um, and it's not that hard to do on your own. If you really want to save a few bucks, if you have some time, I, I think painting can go a long way. Something neutral. I wouldn't do anything too crazy. You really don't want to personalize it to your taste. What you want to do is you want to try to go more neutral than anything else. Um, so yeah, painting, uh, and now getting to Hattie's, uh, business, uh, he's in the lighting business. Um, so like I said, I mean, I'm going to post some pics of his, uh, uh, lamps that he's, uh, offered to give away to some of my clients. Uh, but yeah, so lighting, I think is a big thing. Uh, you know, if you can change up, uh, some, a lot of people still have like the builders, um, lighting fixtures, uh, you could get pretty decent lighting, uh, fixtures even from Hattie and they're, and they're not too expensive, uh, and they will really kind of elevate the, the feel of your home. Um, so, uh, you know, changing the lighting fixtures, even I would say adding pot lights. So there's companies out there that, you know, can do pot lights for you, uh, for about $60 each labor and everything included, and they are licensed and whatnot. Um, and I think that's a really good value. Sometimes what ends up happening is, is that uh, if you have one builder light fixture in the middle of your room uh, and you end up getting like say six pot lights, it makes your house feel brighter and bigger at the same time because that one little fixture in the middle of the room doesn't allow light to kind of spread that way, especially in the evening times. So, but when you have that pot light, it's nice and bright, uh, it's welcoming, and you can see the whole room and it, you almost like get more square footage visually in your eyes. So I think pot lights are a, are a good thing to kind of invest in and they're not super expensive to do. So I, I like the idea of that. Along with the pod lights, like I said, like changing the lighting fixtures, I think they can go a long way. If you have a nice dining room uh, set, uh, it's nice to put a nice dining room uh, like light fixture above your table. It just really helps ground the room, I would say. And, and you get that good feeling when you walk in through the property. So I, so I think that's, uh, that's a good thing to do. 
The other thing inside I would say also is, is that staging. I'm a huge, huge fan of staging. Staging could cost uh, you know, a good amount of money and I don't wanna look at it as a cost. I look at it as an investment. It's the same way that you would look at flooring, uh, adding a countertop, changing your appliances to stainless steel. You're not taking any of that stuff with you when you're selling your house. Those are all investments. So I would look at staging as an investment as well, okay? So I think that the best thing that you can do is, is that uh, remove, and any stager really is gonna tell you this, is to remove all of your personal stuff from the house. Try to eliminate as much stuff as possible, okay? Make it neutral and open as much as you possibly can. Uh, you know, pack away the things that you don't need. Make sure your basement is kind of tidy as well. I would try to say that, hey, try to get the same size boxes, try to put everything neat and tidy in the basement. You can have stuff in the basement, you can have store your furniture in the garage, it's fine. But I would say just have it neat and tidy. Uh, that's the main thing. Uh, but in the basement, in the garage, you could definitely store stuff, make sure that it's all neat and tidy. But yeah, overall with staging. So if you have like a couch that maybe you're not even a huge fan of, but you're like, hey, when I buy my next place or when we move to the next place, this is when we're gonna replace this and I don't wanna spend the money on it now because it's just not gonna fit in this space. I think, again, staging would be a really, really good thing for you guys. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of success with actually having people empty out the entire main floor when their furniture doesn't make sense. Empty out the main floor, reset the main floor. I would say that you wanna make it look almost like a model home that no one has lived in. Upstairs, you probably have beds and whatnot, and the beds can obviously stay, and you're gonna still need to sleep at the home. Um, not everyone has somewhere to go, um, but you can accessorize and put nightstands and things kind of around it, and that will actually complete the whole look of the staged home. Now. With staging the home, uh, what I really find when you take all of these steps, like changing things in the kitchen, uh, changing light fixtures, painting the place, uh, staging, what I really find what happens is, is that your home ends up looking more like a model home. And I think that's what you really wanna get. I think you wanna get to a point of where it kind of looks like a model home. Uh, because what you're trying to do is, is that, and I tell, uh, this is my way of looking at it. So when somebody comes to look at your house, if they're a qualified buyer, what they understand right now is your list price. So they understand what your price is. And if they have a good agent, they probably already have an idea of what the prices are around that neighborhood. So they know, even if you've priced it a little bit lower, that what this house could potentially sell for. So they're there because they, they understand the pricing and the pricing kind of makes sense to them. They understand how many bedrooms, washrooms, uh, you have, they understand a little bit about the house in terms of layout and whatnot, depending on what type of uh, virtual tours that you have put out there. Uh, they understand the location of where you are. So a lot of these things are major things for people making a decision in a property. So I think, you know, I wanna say like almost 70% of this stuff should be checked off by the time the buyer gets into the door. I think the rest of it is gonna be emotional uh, when they get through the door. Um, if you guys have purchased homes before, I'm sure that you've had this feeling when you open the door, the realtor opens the door, you step foot in it, and you kind of have a homey feeling. So when you get that feeling, that's what you really wanna try to get across to buyers, okay? So th that, I think that by resetting your home and investing in it in specific areas, you can get that feeling. So when you're walking into the property, um, you know, you feel it like homey, and then you have this, you build this emotional attachment to the property. So I think uh, that could go a really, really long way, especially when someone becomes emotionally attached. Uh, you know, in my experience, when someone becomes emotionally attached to the property, they're probably willing to spend a few more bucks than it probably is worth. So I think it's important to create that. Well, in creating all of that, we can't forget about curb appeal. So curb appeal is very important as well. Um, that's the first thing that they're gonna see before they even get into the house. I wouldn't say that you have to overly invest in curb appeal. I mean, if you have great landscaping outside, definitely it's gonna help you. Landscaping is expensive. I'm starting to get quotes and starting to go through some of the stuff that I wanna do to my house in terms of landscaping, and it's not cheap. So uh, I don't think that you have to like do crazy interlocking and you know rip out your whole driveway unless it needs it. Um, I, I don't think that you really need to go that way. I think that you know uh, making sure that your grass looks green. Uh, if you have to replace your grass, I would say hey that could be a good idea of replacing grass. Uh, sod isn't super expensive and it's relatively easy to install. So if you have a few weeks or something before you're going to list your property, it's not super difficult. I'm not sure if this will exactly work, but I'm pretty sure it worked with one of my old neighbors. Uh, back in the day when I was a kid, I used to work with a landscaper and he basically, I reached out to him and I said, hey, like my neighbor's gonna, you know, re 
sought his place, sh what should we do? Should we rip out this whole thing? And I believe he, what he told me was, is just like, if it's completely dead or whatever, like just cut it down to whatever and lay sod on top of it. So don't quote me on this. This is based on my memory. I think he just said to like lay the sod right on it and water the heck out of it. So, and the, his backyard turned out really good. However, the real process is, is my point is, is that if you have dead grass, it's not super, super expensive to deal with it. Again, it's like painting. It's something you could probably do yourself. So um, it is worth it to have like nice green grass when someone pulls up to it. Uh, you want to obviously make sure that your driveway looks nice. If it's got, kind of been faded, it's five, six years old since it's been paved. Uh, it's not a bad idea to get someone in there to reseal. Uh, again, something that you can do if you want to do it. I think it's not that expensive to do if you have a double car driveway. I think it's probably 150, 250 bucks, somewhere in that range to have it resealed. It'll look nice and, you know, almost like brand new. If your driveway is an older driveway, you know, 20 or 25 years old and it's sinking all over the place uh, and you do have, happen to have old interlocking in there and it's falling apart, it's not a bad idea. I know it could cost a couple of bucks, but it's not a bad idea to have someone come in there and straighten it out and, and make it look a little bit better because um, you do want to have that feeling created before they even get into the house. So the thing is, is that if everything looks looks seamless by the time they get into the house and your house shows really well, uh, I think that you guys would have a lot of success uh, with achieving a really high selling price for your property. So yeah, a curb appeal is very important. Make sure everything looks neat and tidy. Um, sometimes I've seen people change like the front door of their uh, or the uh, locks on their door and it's not painted correctly. So nice fresh uh, coat of paint on the door could go a long way. Uh, if you have like an older door, it might not be a bad idea to replace it if you have some damage on it and whatnot. Uh, the other thing also is, is that for me, I'm very, very picky, uh, before I even put a house on the market, I actually want to take the key that the, the seller is giving me. And I want to try the key inside of this lock and I want to make sure that it, it turns easily. I don't want to have to put the key in there and turn it and the key doesn't easily kind of turn. So we just had that with another listing of mine. I, I, you know, before I put the key in the lockbox, I tried it and I had to like pull it out slightly. Then I was able to unlock it. I don't like that. I want the key to go into the lock. I want to be able to turn it smooth, not making any noises. That actually reminds me, creaking doors, uh, a very easy fix, a little bit of WD-40 on the hinges. It goes a long way, guys, so you don't have creaking doors. Even if you have creaking doors right now, like honestly, a drop of WD-40 will get rid of that annoying squeak. So yeah, like uh, small things like this will go a long way. Um, this is at a high level of what I can tell you. Uh, any of the properties that I list, this is the, we have a more thorough list that we kind of go through and we have a stager that goes through the property, whether the property is going to be staged or not, uh, if that investment is going to be made or not. Uh, there is still things that you could do with your own uh, stuff that you have in the house if that's not an investment that you're in a position to make. But overall, that's a quick and dirty way of I can tell you of what to do and you know things that would actually add value to your property. Uh, if you guys have any questions or you want to get the full list or I was talking about the data that I have earlier for uh, first half of June for Durham, reach out to me. I'd be happy to share any of that information with you guys. Until then, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Hope you have an awesome day. And by the way, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Hope you guys enjoy. I heard it's going to have, I think we're going to have like nice hot weather and it's going to be a heat wave. So um, yeah, enjoy your Sunday guys and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Sell it, 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 sell it,